What would you say to someone who is considering counseling or maybe someone you think should do it but is waffling, is not really committing to cross into that decision? Um, uh, yeah, as I said earlier, one of the it's very difficult sometimes for people to just take the leap, so to speak. It's definitely improved over the last few years in particular. Um, but there are a lot of people that I feel like um, would benefit from mm -hmm. having a conversation that is shared. And, and I think so many people do carry heavy. You know, I, I challenge everyone to, that has thought about it, mm -hmm. you know, even in the depths of, you know, I might need to talk to somebody to do that. I'm not the best fit for everyone, but and for those people that are actually in counseling, I encourage them to find a good fit. That's actually one of the most important factors on whether or not therapy or counseling is going to be successful is, is your relationship with your therapist. You know, Mark, you had mentioned that one of your expertise is dealing with addiction, drug addiction. What, what do you suggest to someone who's struggling with that demon, if you will, and, and how to work through those issues? Um, I was really profoundly changed by a conversation that I had with some addiction professionals at a luncheon that we were at in that we, he, he brought up this number that just blew me away. He said, you know, 90% of addicted individuals get no treatment of any kind. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it is nearly 90% in America get no treatment of any kind. And he says, Mark, you need to focus less on the 10% that get help mm -hmm. and do your very best to cut into the 90%. And so I had this whole mission of cutting into the 90. Mm -hmm. I said, we need to cut into the 90. I need to go around and okay. speak to people. It's one of the reasons I'm on this show right now. No, I'm, I'm hoping that that 90% out there that has thought about, and all they got to do is kind of th think about it deep down in their soul. They can't think about it from their head because, you know, they're they're wired in such a way where sure. where drinking or doing drugs is a part of their the way their way of being, mm -hmm. and so you can't reason with them to stop whatever that is. But ideally, it starts with a conversation, mm -hmm. and and hopefully that leads to a treatment and then hopefully a better life. Why, why is it that 90% of people wouldn't know they have a problem? Are they in denial or are they just, I mean, what has kind of been the, the theme in that type of client, if you will? Well, I've been working on this, you know, this book for, I guess, four or five years. Mm -hmm. It's truly been developing over the last four and five um, about the unwritten rules okay. of the unhealthy family or individuals. Mm -hmm. and. The first rule is we don't talk about what goes on in this house. Okay. I'm talking about this house. Oh, I'm talking I see. about this house. I'm talking about this house. Uh -huh. And it's that rule is actually followed by individuals. It's followed by families. It's followed by corporations about not talking about what goes on in this house. So they, in order to to stop or uh, deal with their addiction, they would have to talk about what goes on in their house. And they're told or learn early on we don't tell what goes on in this house. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that second rule in that house is that if anybody asks you, tell them everything's fine. And, and it's not fine, but right. you're told it's fine. I, I will describe it as the thermostat is set at 52 degrees, mm -hmm. but everybody tells you it's warm. So <laughs> it's not the best environment. Right. Third rule is, you know, to do as I say, not as I do. Okay. So if I can drink 20 beers, but you really can't drink. Mm -hmm. And so there's that whole debate in your head about what's going on with this. Fourth one is if, if we ignore this, it'll go away. You know, this is just going to go away if I mm -hmm. just ignore this. Mm -hmm. and, and it doesn't. You know, we'll just ignore it. And kids grow up with that as well. Um, the fifth one is every day is a mystery. You have no idea what's going to happen. That's for sure. <laughs> <And> so like, <laughs> so you turn true. the handle yeah. and you have no idea what's going to go uh -huh. on. And that can be unsettling. Sure can. And so the six rules, if anybody gets too close to you and your issues, you attack them. Uh -huh. So you take the focus off yourself and your issues. And, and the last one is pain's avoided at all costs, but pain needs to be dealt with. You know, pain is everywhere mm -hmm. and in everyone all the time. Mm -hmm. So in order to be healthy, you kind of got to fight those. We're going to break the rules really to be healthy. It's kind of an oxymoron. Mm -hmm.